We're going to talk about paleoclimate. Paleoclimate, ancient climate, provide information regarding the natural evolution of the climatic system for the last dozens or hundreds of million years, and we can better understand the current disturbance in a wider context. On this graph, temperature evolution is shown for the last 500 million years that have just uh, elapsed uh, until the right-hand side of the uh, picture. And you can see that the time scale is zoomed on in the more recent period. The units correspond to thousands of years on the right-hand side and hundreds or even hundreds of million years on the left-hand side. The variation amplitude is several degrees, almost 10 degrees warmer for the uh, warmest uh, periods. 10 degrees means uh, tropical climates in the uh, current uh, polar areas where we have found uh, palm tree fossil, fossilized palm trees or crocodile bones in the ice. And uh, 20,000 years ago, we have uh, variations that uh, correspond to uh, ice sheets over northern Europe or uh, Canada some 20,000 years ago. Now, our recent period in the evolution of ecosystems, say a time scale of a few million years, this is rather a cold period and our ecosystems are adjusted to cold periods. We have had fluctuations uh, during the last glacial and interglacial periods. The interesting question is, what allows the climate to regulate the climate uh, based on geological timescales? Now, regulation systems, well, there aren't that many, interestingly, and the most in important is the carbon cycle. Carbon on Earth is controlled by the volcanic source. The quantity of carbon increases in the atmosphere and in the oceans when volcans are in activity, and continent erosion generates precipitation of the carbonates at the bottom of the ocean, and erosion decreases the quantity of CO2 in the atmosphere. Now, erosion depends on the climate. The warmer the climate, the bigger the erosion. And this phenomenon controls temperature on the Earth's surface for geological timescales. On the left-hand side of the picture, we have a blown up picture for the transition between the paleo and the Pliocene, the, the Paleocene and the Eocene, there was a uh, very uh, brutal increase in temperature, as shown in the uh, middle picture. The time scale is between 56 million years and 54 million years. And this very sudden temperature increase by approximately 5 degrees went along with increased uh, gases, uh, greenhouse effect gases in the atmosphere and higher acid uh, acidity in the oceans, more or less what is happening now. Naturally, the carbon thermostat brought the Earth back to the initial stage in about 200 million years. So there was a regulation, except that it took 200,000 years, which is a relatively short period if we consider the history of Earth, but a very long period if we consider our history. There have been glacial and interglacial periods of cycles the most recent alternating phase was some 20,000 years ago, uh, an interglacial period such as the one we are going through now. These cycles are rather interesting because in the history of science, it does demonstrate that climate changes over the years. In the 19th century, when this was discovered, scientists started asking questions about the way the climatic system worked. The underlying mechanisms are still not fairly understood, not really understood. Obviously, those cycles are governed by uh, astronomic phenomena and the uh, 
Earth's orbit around the Sun, but it has been demonstrated that the carbon cycle also plays an active role in the uh, glacial interglacial period cycle. Just to provide a few figures, during the glacial period, the uh, temperature was five degrees lower. There was ice on the uh, northern hemisphere. The ice sheet covered all of Canada and Europe. And the ocean level was obviously lower because the ice uh, had frozen the water on the ocean, and the, uh, this had led to changes in the sea level. Long-term climate variations could be thought to be slow. However, it came as a surprise in the last few decades that some very quick events sometimes happen during climate changes. During the warm period, the la, for instance, the last interglacial period, temperatures increased uh, by 10 degrees uh, in Greenland in a matter of um, 50 years. The scale of a human life, and along the same lines, we also found that uh, iceberg melting happened relatively fast with a huge decrease of the ice cap. 14,600 years, the uh, level of the sea rose by 300. Uh, 20 meters in 300 years, which means uh, 6 meters per century. Now, this type of uh, very quick climatic change are not well understood, but they raise questions regarding the current situation. We have to uh, wonder whether the same scenario must be contemplated uh, for the coming centuries. In conclusion, we now understand that slow components play a determining role on the uh, climate. Among the slow components, we have the deep ocean, the ice cap, and the carbon cycle. And, but there are also um, associated mechanisms which are not fully understood and therefore are a source of uncertainty. We don't have enough data on the way uh, these uh, slow components will evolve, and most of the time they're not taken into consideration or badly taken into consideration in future projections. However, I think we should understand or try and understand that the uh, current context of climatic change will probably lead us to long-term changes with slow variations, but potentially also some quick variations and uh, breaks in the system.